reflecting on a story today of, of a man by the name uh, Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir. And how ibn al-Munkadir, he was a, a, righteous, uh, a, a righteous man and scholar that lived in, in the past. Perhaps from the time of the Tabi'i Tabi'in, two generations after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He lived in the city of Rasulullah. He lived in Medina. Alhamdulillah. May Allah all grant us all a, a trip or a visit or a life even in Medina. Amin ya So he lived in Medina and that year they were suffering from a drought. It did not rain a single bit that whole entire year. The next year came in and it still hadn't rained. The people are starting to, to feel it because they have to travel very, very far for water. Their crops are not growing anymore. Their cattle are dying and things are getting very bad. Him being a scholar, he's standing there praying Salatul Istisqa, which is a salah only for the purpose of rain to come down. They would pray and they would make supplication they prayed it day after day after day and it was not raining for months. Until one day, Ibn al-Munkadir, he noticed that there was a man that was in the corner of a masjid. He never seen this man praying istisqa. He comes, he prays his fard in Masjid al-Nabawi and he leaves. So he noticed this man coming in. And he came in during a time where the masjid was empty most of the time. But Ibn al-Munkadir was very curious of who this man is and what he's up to. He looks like a pious man, he looks righteous. So he followed him and he sat right behind him quietly. And he heard this man make dua. He lifted his hand and he was whispering, Oh Allah, the cattle are dying and the vegetation is drying. Ya Allah, let it rain so that the humanity, so we could live. Let it rain on the city of your blessed messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and do not deprive us. And he, this man began to cry. And who's narrating this? Ibn Munkadir. He's narrating. He's like, this man started to cry. And he said as he was supplicating and he continued to supplicate for perhaps more than an hour, he kept supplicating, asking for it to rain. He said, and as he was making dua, we started to hear the thunder. He said, I started to hear the thunder from a distance. He said, and before he put his hands down, the skies opened with rain and it kept raining. Until يعني, this, this man became خلص, clear to Muhammad there's a secret between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's obviously one of the awliya. So he followed him to his house the next day. The man didn't know. He knocked on his door. He said, Salamu alaykum. Alaykum as salam. The wife is the one who opened the door. He said, Who lives in this house? Is there a man that lives in this house? She's like, Yes. Then the man came. And the man, when he came, he said, Mada wa sha'nuk, like, what, what do you want? He said, I noticed you praying for it to rain. And I saw it rain before you put your hands down in dua. I wanted to ask, what is the secret ibadah between you and Allah to make you this close to Him? The man, he said, why are you following me? Why are you following me? Why are you asking me these questions? He's like, Wallahi, if you knew about me, you wouldn't have asked. And he told his wife, pack up, we're leaving Medina. And Muhammad ibn Muqadir, he said, and from that day, I never seen him again. He left Medina to live in a place where he can be discreet. Brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes that quiet person sitting in the corner, the one that nobody knows, the one that perhaps is not dressed in the most fashionable way, perhaps doesn't smell as good as you do, perhaps doesn't drive a car as nice as you do, perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps this type of person, if he were to come and ask you to talk or have a conversation, you would say, Wallahi, I got some, I have, I'm busy right now. 
I don't got time. Assalamu alaikum. Perhaps that person is the person that Muhammad ibn Munkadir encountered. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said in an authentic hadith, he said, رب أشعث أغبر مدفوع من الأبواب لو أقسم على الله لأبر He said, perhaps a person who's dusty and raggedy in, in their clothes, if you see them knock on your door, you wouldn't open it if you knew that it was them knocking. That person could be someone who, if they lift their hand and ask Allah, Allah will answer immediately. All the barakah is in that person. We never know where the barakah is. We never know who the barakah is with. But you know what we know? We know from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he gave these people extra, extra attention. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be seen supplicating and making a certain dua. Wallahi, only a true man can make, a true believer, man and woman, can make a dua like this. You want to hear this dua? Oh Allah, make me live with the poor and the needy. And make me die with the poor and the needy. And revive me and resurrect me on the day of judgment with the poor and the needy. Who would make this dua? Would we make that? The Rasul would be seen constantly making this dua. He wanted to live with the poor and the needy. He wanted to die with them and he wanted to be resurrected with them on the Day of Judgment and he wanted them to surround him on the Day of Judgment. Look, there's something about the poor and the needy. The ones that Allah loved so much, perhaps He didn't give them the dunya. Or perhaps they didn't want it and Allah gave it to them and they chose this life on themselves. Or perhaps they're giving in abundance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they choose to live this way. Look at this. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ كُلُّ ضَعِيفٍ متضعف. He said, the one who enters Jannah is every weak person, or the one who is strong but acts weak. متضعف is someone who is the opposite but acts this way. Like someone who's strong and mighty and powerful and has the ability, but chooses to speak in a way that makes them come off as not as strong as they are. They're very humble. They're very, you know, collected. If you see them, you wouldn't think they had this power, they had this wealth, they drove this type of car, they lived in this type of house, but they, they choose to live this way. يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ كُلُّ ضَعِيفٍ متضعف. In another hadith, يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ كُلُّ هَيِّنٍ لَيِّنٍ The one who enters Jannah is every easygoing, humble person. هَيِّن لَيِّن Easygoing and humble. We're sitting down right here, imagine, imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting in a halaqa in the masjid. He's sitting in the masjid in Nabawi. He's sitting with who? He's sitting with Abu Bakr, with Umar, with Uthman, with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum, with the ten given glad tidings of Jannah, with Sahaba like Abu Huraira who were writing down his ahadith like Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As who were following him to, to record everything he's saying. Students of knowledge, scholars, the closest and the highest of, of ranks after the prophets and messengers. They're sitting in a circle. The Rasul Sallallahu is speaking and he sees one of these men coming into the masjid. This man, his name is Julaybib. Who, who knows about Julaybib? You know about Julaybib's story? Julaybib was, they say he was a short, stocky man, raggedy, patched up thobe. His hair was always disheveled. His face wasn't pleasant to look at. That's how he was described. He lived in a house that had walls, but he couldn't afford a ceiling, so he slept with the stars as his blanket. Julaybib was a very poor person. Was he in status? Was he from Aus, Khazraj, from Quraysh? Was he from the tribes of uh, this and that? No, 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 he didn't have a tribe, Aslan. He has no status. The Rasul cut off this halaqa, the circle. He's like, ah, Julaybib. And the Sahaba's like, Julaybib, like, who, who this cat? Who is this guy, Julaybib? Where did he come from? And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Julaybib? Do you guys know Julaybib? They're all looking at him like, no, no, we don't know Julaybib. Who's Julaybib? They're like, ah, the Julaybib. Yeah, Julaybib, come. And Julaybib came. He's like, Ya Rasulullah, Salaamu Alaikum. He said, Alaikum Assalam. He said, Ya Julaybib, Ala Tatazawaj, why don't you get married? Why don't you get married? 
said, Ya Rasulullah, how can I get married? I have no wealth, I'm broke, and I have no status. I don't have a tribe or a family. How, how, what are you asking me, Ya Rasulullah? He left. He prayed his ra'at, two rak'at, in the corner of the masjid. Nobody knows him. He left. He came back a couple days later, same. He was sitting with the companions. The Prophet ﷺ was talking to him. He saw Julaybib. Ya Julaybib, why don't you get married? He's like, Ya Rasulullah, you see the way I look, Ya Rasulullah, come on. Man. Who's going to accept me? But, you know, he didn't want to say that. So he said, La mala wa la jah. He said, I don't have wealth. I don't have status. The third time the Rasul saw him, he's like, Ya Julaybib, go and get married. He's like, Ya Rasulullah, didn't I tell you? You're keeping like, it's almost insulting, right? In front of all the Sahaba. You know, he's telling me to get married and I can't. Ya Rasulullah, who's gonna marry me? Then he's like, you know Fulana, bint Fulan? And all the Sahaba are like, we know her. Taman, this is a woman, one of the, 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 the best looking women in Medina. All the Sahaba, the, the high rank Sahaba asked for her hand and she rejected all of them. She had some, something in her imagination. She's a pious woman, a believing woman, young and youthful and beautiful. And Julaybib, he's like, yeah, of course I know her. <laughs> and the Sahaba was like, yeah, we know her too. You all, we all got rejected. You know? And then he's like, go to her father's house. And ask them, tell them that Rasulullah sent me to marry your daughter. Allah, Julaybib, he's like, Ya Rasulullah, yani, I don't have anything. He's like, do you own anything for a dowry? He's like, just a metal ring, Ya Rasulullah. He's like, that's good enough. Go and, go and ask for him. He goes and he, he knocks on the door. Who opens? Her father. He said, Julaybib, what, what are you here for? You want to clean around the house? You want to... You want to help me build? So what, what are you here for? What, what is your purpose knocking on my door? And he's like, no, no, no. I came to, I came to marry your daughter. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, Rasulullah sent me to marry her. Rasulullah sent me to marry. He's like, Allahu Akbar. He's like, okay, I have to really discuss this with my wife. He goes and he's talking to his wife. Yeah, you know how and Julaybib and look and where is he going to put our daughter and we rejected all this. Uthman ibn Affan prepared a whole army, you know, like, and we, we, you know, we're, we're rejecting high status sahaba, right? And uh, who, hears, who hears this? His daughter, the daughter. Bint al-Iman, right? She was raised in the school of who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This one, she was the tarbiyah of who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She came in and she overheard her parents. She's like, my parents, what, what is this that you're speaking of? She said, oh, Julaybib came and he said, Rasulullah sent him to marry you. He's like, wallahi, if Rasulullah sent him, then he's the best thing for me. I accept this marriage. Like, did you see how he looks? Open the door and, and look at him. And she said, I don't need to. Rasulullah knows what's best for me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows what's best for me. I accept without even seeing him. She has just accepted. Allahu Akbar. If Allah or His Messenger judge something, it becomes the most beloved thing to them. That's how the believer is. That's what happened with this woman. She got married, Allahu Akbar, He invited everyone to His walima or whoever He can, maybe a couple tens of people. He gave them water, He gave them bread, that's all He could afford. He gave her the nice metal ring. He fit it to her size because it was on his hand before. And, 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 and she was happy because Rasulullah chose her husband. Everyone else, the husband chooses. But for her, she's happy because the messenger chose her husband. So she's happy. And Julaybib, you think he was happy? They, never in his wildest dreams did he think this day is going to happen. He would sit down and dream of marriage. He never thought this was going to happen to him. But this happened to him. He went and the day of, the night of the wedding, when they go home, what happens? Medina gets raided and they say, Ya Khayl Allah, Rikabi, come and defend al Medina. He jumps on his horse. He tells her, look, I love you and I've been waiting for this day my whole entire life, but I got to drop you and go and defend Medina. Allahu Akbar. Look at the, 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 the believers when they come together. He dropped her and he went and he what? He subhanallah, he, he fought and he was martyred. And on that day, the Prophet sallallahu he was looking for the martyrs. They said, this, Ya Rasulullah, this person was martyred. This person was martyred. This person was martyred. You know what he said? Aina Julaybib. 
And the one who was recording, he said, Man Julaybib. Like, who is Julaybib? Such a weird name, right? Julaybib. Who is Julaybib? Ain al Hib. He's like, where's, where's the one I love? Where is he? Nobody knew Julaybib. You know? He went and looked at Julaybib and he had mud on his face and dust. The Rasul bent down on his knees, he kneeled down, and he used his garment, he cleaned his face. He cleaned him, alayhi salatu was salam. He's like, Ya Habibi, Ya Julaybib. He said, You died defending Medina. You died after doing all this. Anta minni wa ana mink. Wallahi, you are from me and I am from you. You are from me and I am from you. You are from me and I am from you. And all the Sahaba like, Who is this guy? And then the women, subhanallah, who just got married, all of the greatest Sahaba now, the biggest Sahaba, the highest of status started to ask for a hand. They're like, this is the woman Rasulullah chose, we have to. And then the, Allah, she got married after to another great Sahabi as well. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. And as for Julaybib, Habib Rasulullah he died, nobody knew him. But it doesn't matter who knew him. All that matters is that Allah knew him. So how many of us are investing in our relationship with Allah? Does Allah know us? Is there a secret ibadah that we're doing? Is there something that only Allah knows about us that no one else knows? It's only between us and Allah because that's the way we build this relationship. If, if we said no, then we got to find that thing. We got to start doing it today. The secret act of worship between us and Allah. We ask Allah to make us beloved to Him and for us to truly love Allah, to guide us, to guide our children, to guide our families, to bless us, that whoever amongst us are single, to bless us with righteous spouses. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallah wa bihamdaka shahadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما